thank you for joining us today on Prophecy in the News. I'm your host, Kevin Clarkson. We are joined today by Jonathan Kahn, an author, uh, anointed speaker of God, uh, pastor, shepherd of the Jerusalem Center, Beth Israel in Wayne, which is outside New York City, but in the state of New Jersey. That's right. And people that live in that area know exactly what I mean, mm -hmm. the Jersey Turnpike. That's right. So, uh, <laughs> what, what yeah. a delight, though. You've yeah. been a very busy man um, ever since the Lord sort of mm -hmm. brought you to national prominence with an explosive book called The Harbinger. Yes. You've been yes. on before. We've talked yes. about that. Yes. And then you followed that up with The Mystery of the Shemitah. Mm -hmm. And yes. uh, we, we can talk some yep. about those things. Mm -hmm. But you are coming now with 365 mysteries under one cover called The Book <laughs> of Mysteries. That's right. Yeah, the, the Book of Mysteries is, um, if the Harbinger is the uncovering of a mystery or the Shemitah, the Book of Mysteries is literally the opening up of hundreds of the mysteries of God and what I believe are the greatest mysteries. Um, but from everything, from the mysteries of the ages, mysteries of the end times, right. mysteries of heaven, mysteries of the hidden writings of the rabbis, mysteries that you can never see in the English of your Bible, but incredible stuff, mysteries of history. I mean, so, so really that, and it's uh, kind of done, you said it was three. Now you can read it right through. A lot of people are reading it right through, but you can also take a, have a mystery a day. And or so, just and drop in wherever you, can, you, you like. You can drop in wherever, because there's, there's at the beginning you'll see a list of all the mysteries. You can do it any way. You, but it also, at the same time, it, there's also a story behind it too, in that, that there is a man goes to the wilderness, the desert, meets a man called the teacher. The teacher every day takes him on a journey on mountaintops, caverns, you know, secret things. And every day opens up a mystery of God. So it's one year in the desert. So it's also a story. So it's the teacher giving to the disciples. So, so you see it. And, it's in, and so at the same time, at the end of every mystery, it's not just to get blown away. And right. you know, I, pray we are, I pray we're always blown away by the Lord. And there's amazing. And there may, by the way, there are many things in there, as far as we know, have never been anywhere. I mean, there are things that are that. So there are things that you'll see for the first time. But the other thing is that it's not just to be blown away, but that it changes your life. So the, th the idea is to take it and go with it. Take the mystery and it can change your life. So it's all those things. And so actually, there's good application for yeah, everybody. Everything, uh, always. You know, and if you, and there also, it's for, it doesn't matter how long you've been in the Lord, but also there are people who are unsaved. People are giving it to their unsaved friends and they're getting saved. So that, that's, okay. me, that's, that's the, the greatest blessing for me to hear. Amen. And this was published in uh, what? It just, what? oh, when it came out? Uh -huh. it, ju it just came out a few months ago. Yeah, yeah just, it just came out. Back in the fall yeah, or it just right came out. Yeah, Christmas. Yeah, in the fall, in the autumn. Yeah, it just came yeah. out. It's new. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, so it's really, there's so much here. It's concentrated. It's almost like and every, every page is a mystery, but every page could almost be a book. So it's, I be, you know, I believe it doesn't matter how, how, where you are in the Lord. This is, I, I believe that, you know, we're going through very interesting times now. No dramatic doubt about time, that. Dramatic no times. Doubt. And we have to be strong in the Lord. We have to be strong in the word. We have to be strong, grounded and rooted. You know, it can't just be we know, OK, this, you know, the Lord's coming. We have to be strong. And this is what this is about as well. So there's going to yeah. be end time mysteries, all, but there's going to be it's, it's to ultimately change our lives. I think when you say that of a verse in Daniel that talks about, uh, you know, the yeah. rise of the wicked one, it says they that know their God will be strong and do exploits. Great exploits. Yes, exactly. that's what we want to be. Exactly. Exactly. And a lot of it. There are a lot of keys. We are end time believers and there's a lot of keys in the Bible about how to live in the end times and how to overcome. Amen. Um, and that and so I wanted to put that in there as well. So well, yes. we, we've been offering this since it was published, but we wanted to roll it out when yeah. we could get you here. Yeah. So you busy man. And we got yeah. you here for, for yeah. right between the inauguration and your last engagement. Yes. So we are delighted to get all we can. We'll be doing three shows. So this yes. is the first of three. You will want to catch them all. But and, um, and we're going to open up. I know a lot of the mysteries. Can I just dive in? Yeah, yeah we want to. We yeah, want to give people a taste of what this is like. Uh, this is intriguing. The Harbinger of Baal. Yeah, well, this is that, that now this is more about, yeah, what's been just happening now. Um, yeah, this is the Harbinger. The Harbinger has not stopped. The Harbingers have not stopped. America has not stopped falling away from God. And for those not familiar with that term, it's, right. just, it's, it's, it's a word that means a warning. It it's means a, a warning. And that a was portent of disaster. That's exactly. Yeah, it doesn't have to be disaster. Usually that is. But the Harbinger in a nutshell um, is that in the last days of ancient Israel, there were warnings given, prophetic warnings. Uh, God was calling them back and warning them to not be destroyed. Well, those same harbingers have appeared in America uh, uncannily, eerily. You know, I mean, some, some in America, some in New York City, some in Washington, some involving the president, all that. So that's happened. Well, that has not stopped. America has been turning away from God. Now, in the la since the harbinger came out, it has not stopped. So the harbingers, harbingers have continued to appear. And I'll, just, I'll mention something Surely. that in... This is this. This is just in the last few months. Uh, you know, in the last in the last uh, actually years of Israel, when they were when judgment came, they were actually worshiping a particular God. That was the God Baal or Baal. We know. 
And, and so this is the God behind the harbingers is Baal. They're, they're turned, Baal is the, is the anti-God. He's the substitute God. It means God. Lord. It means Lord, master, owner. And the wicked one will claim to be God. So, so ultimately he's yeah. behind it. Actually, you get one of the, you know, one of the things we got, one of the names for Baal was Baal Zavuv, Lord, and which, it, which became Beelzebub. So, uh-huh, so uh-huh. even the name of Satan is linked to Baal. I mean, so Satan's behind Baal. But Baal is that when, when a nation that has known God turns away from God, turns in some way turns to Baal. Baal is the God of increase, God of materialism, God of sexual immorality. His worship had immorality, had, had, um, you know, had also, and also the offering up of children. You know, and so here we, America, wow. what's happened? We turn away from God, we turn to materialism, we've turned to sexual immorality, we've turned to calling evil good and good evil, and we've offered up our children, millions of our unborn children. So this is Baal. You know, this is Baal. And he's also the God of perse- the persecution of God's people. So we're seeing what? So could the sign of Baal right, actually judgment. appear or manifest in America? Oh, well, my. Now, now you think, like, that's crazy. Like, first of all, who talks about Baal? If you're not a believer in the Bible, you probably don't even know what Baal is. So <laughs> how could this possibly happen? Well, it happened. And that is, it happened this autumn. It happened in New York City, the, the city of the Harbingers. And I witnessed it. I, was, I went down to witness it. We filmed it. And that is that, that what happened is they... Reco- they constructed in New York City the Arch of Baal, the arch that led the worshippers of Baal to worship in the Temple of Baal from Syria. This is where this was the this was the capital of all sorts of Baal worship. They they would go through this arch of worship. Well, they put it up in New York City. <coughs> they had a ceremony, had a big unveiling. They played Middle Eastern music as if it was the music of a Baal worshiping you know gathering. The the the. Uh, the deputy mayor of New York gave this, you know, gave this rousing thing. And if you notice in the harbingers, whenever they erect a harbinger, they always use the word defiance. We're doing this as a, a, the spirit of defiance, an act of defiance, because that's what the harbinger is about, a nation in defiance of God. Well, the, the deputy mayor says, we are putting this up as an act of defiance. Wow, here, here, wow, wow. here, the sign of a nation that once knew God, turned away, turned to immorality, went in New York City and actually and it wasn't far it was actually from that where they put it up if you looked you could see ground zero where all the harbingers were in li- in light of that yeah yeah who was behind this really do you know who the real uh, it, it's weird well say not, <laughs> <well, yeah. laughs> uh, not the actors doing it uh, on the ceremony but who actually was driving uh, it's, humanly. it's it's weird thing because when you look at the harbingers there's not you know nobody knows what they're doing it just happens by this kind of weird put, uh, uh, confluence of events well, th- on one hand, this was, they were, people saying, well, this te- these temples of Baal were destroyed I- in the Middle East, so we're going to put them up be- for, the, for culture, for, you know, to show that the, that the culture, the, it was like a cultural thing. Uh-huh. I mean, but think, but here's another thing about that. This temple of, the temples of Baal were destroyed by ISIS. Now, ISIS, now here's the thing, in the harbinger, one of the harbingers is that of the terrorist, you know, that, that the I terrorist remember. makes a strike on the land. Well, that was Al-Qaeda. But ISIS is even, you know, that in, in ancient Israel, the terrorists were the Assyrians. And so, the, so, the, so Israel was rebuilding what the Assyrians destroyed. Well, ISIS are the descendants of the Assyrians. Yeah, They're right. literally, I mean, the same place. They actually, the Assyrians used to behead, behead and, and, you know, they would decapitate right. and make it known. Well, ISIS is, it's, it's like the, re- we don't believe in reincarnation, but they're like the reincarnation. The reappearance, the, the, yeah, they, they are They are that. And so here we are now, by doing this, by rebuilding this, this arch to Baal, this, we were also rebuilding literally what the Assyrians destroyed. That's, that's the harbinger. We're literally doing that. Fascinating. I mean, yeah. So that just happened. Just, that's the, that's the, the most recently. So it has not stopped. Any more than America's fall from God has not yet stopped. Wow. Yeah. So that, that's a prophetic update. <sighs> and the harbinger, you know, you, you, well, well I, know we're, I know by the time we're finished with the shows, things hidden in the harbinger that we didn't even realize that, that have to do with what's happening right now. Right, well. right. So, yeah. Well, l- let's talk about the yeah. book of mysteries. What yeah. kind of uh, mysteries does this open up? All Maybe some main overview of what it's all in here. sorts of all sorts of mysteries. Um, the uh, there's something called the, the mystery. There are, s- for instance, the, the mystery of the. I'll just give you some titles that we can get in. Mystery of the secret angels. There are angels that that are that that you would never <laughs> think of, yet you have encountered them in your life. There is the, the there's the seven mysteries of your life that your life has seven events that that actually goes back. It's, it's in an ancient book of the Bible that outlines your life. There's something called the Maccabean blueprint. 
where where it gives the most detailed blueprint of the end times ever and that's that linked to the maccabees but amazingly thing there there is there's something called how to how to live in the future there's 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 a secret in the hebrew where you live in the future how do you do it? or or how to change your past i mean well let me give you an example okay you, okay <clears throat> one of the one of the first things in the, one of the first mysteries the mystery of god's name now god's name now and by the way the teacher is talking to the disciple and saying do you know the name of god and the, the disciple says no he says well he says you do you say it all the time he says how can that be well every time you say if i say i'm jonathan you say i'm kevin you say i'm this i'm that you are saying the name of god the name of god yehovah or yahweh or is i am right. and so think about that in order to talk about yourself you must first say the name of god because your existence comes from him. Amen. And so you cannot speak about yourself without saying God. So in order to say your name, you've got to say his name. Think about that. Yes, People who great. don't know God have to say I am. And even if you say, listen, I am, uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm miserable. Well, you still have to have God in there. <laughs> if you say I'm alone. Well, you're not alone because it's I am alone. You, you know, there, whatever. Yeah. It is, you know, if you say I'm in sin, it's I am is with you. And that I mean the cross, it's I am with you in sin. So here are the things. So the, 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 one of the secrets of living, I mean, secret of life, you know, we think we're living to God, which is right. But we, the real secret, the first secret is to live from God. Every Amen. moment of our lives comes from I am. If you can say Amen. I am, you know, you, you are saying that. So the idea is before you do it, do everything from him. Let it be, before you speak, let it be I am speaking. Before you, be what you love, it's going to be I am loving. Do it, live your life from his life. That is the secret. That's who Messiah is. That's the apostles. Yeah. In him we live and move and have our being. Absolutely. And so his name is I am. Absolutely. That's great. That's great. <laughs> you, you think about something. You, you, know, could, so you, you can go on that for weeks. You, you could. You could. And, and Kevin, you know, and the other thing is, is you know, it's the things about God, on one hand, God is simple and yet he's deep as anything. It's Amen. both. Both. It know, is. You know, and I'll give you, know, there, there are mysteries of, of the end times. I know we'll do some prophecy end times. And let me tell you one thing that people don't really realize. Uh -huh. The Bible says that in the last days there will be a great falling away. We know that. <clears throat> we Indeed. see it all around us. It's happening all around us. When men will fall away. Well, we said it's the falling away from faith, apostasy. But apostasy has another meaning. It has a hidden meaning. It actually, what it really, what it actually means, ap apostasia, actually means the departure from the state of being. Now, it, it, it is the falling away from faith. But it also means the departure of the state of being. So what does that mean? A mystery, what is revealing what's happening right now. What it means is in the last days, when you see people falling away from faith, that same age, you will see the departure from being, meaning you will see men departing from the state of manhood. Oh, women departing okay, okay. from the state of womanhood. Marriage departing from the state of marriage. Fa yeah, fatherhood yeah, yeah. from fatherhood. Women from womanhood. Child from childhood. Man from humanity. That's exactly what we're watching. The futile effort to retool the definition of humanity. Creation. We are, we are departing. See, see, the thing is, Kevin, when you, the, cre the world came from the word. So when you remove the word, if people fall away from the word, you remove creation. So people start falling away from the very state of creation. Right. And that's a word for us as end-time believers. We have to hold to this as men we have to be you know as fathers we have to be great fathers as as you know we have to hold marriage we have to uphold manhood we have to hold womanhood all those things but that's this explains everything that we're seeing right now all around it it's that's not an accident that's, that's impressive because i've watched <coughs> not just what i'd call liberalism politically and philosophically but i would call it the blindness of sin in the bible men first deny facts you, you can't reason with them then they deny truth Yes. And now we're trying to deny fundamental reality. 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 And yeah. you can't. If you deny God, you, de you, deny, you deny the creation. You deny reality. Uh -huh. That's exactly it. Yeah. So that, I mean, that, I mean, that's the thing about it. This is just one little word. That's one and little, yet, yeah. And, it says so much, and that's one of the mysteries, the mystery of the apostasy. Now, I'll give you another one. Um, now, this is a different kind of one, but you've heard, you know, of course, the mystery of the, of the Shmicha. Yeah. Okay. But there's a mystery in the, in the mystery book of mysteries called the mystery the, of, the, of the, actually, Wait a minute. <laughs> the Shemitah <laughs> is what I said. The mystery of the Shemitah. See, I'm getting my Hebrew. The mystery of the Shemitah, but in the, in the Book of Mysteries, there's the mystery of the Smicha. Now, what's that? What's that? You be got me. <laughs> be before, <laughs> before there was a sacrifice, before you could offer up the sacrifice, they had to perform a special rite called the Smicha. And what is this? If it was a sin offering, it had to be a Smicha. The priest would have to take the sacrifice, lay his hands on the head of the sacrifice, his palms had to be on that sacrifice, yeah confess his sins or the sins of the offerer onto the sacrifice. He was identifying it, becoming one. The sacrifice was becoming one with that. Right. Then it would be offered up only after the smicha was performed. Now, 
if Messiah is our sin offering, then, Amen. then, then there had to be the smicha had to be performed. So what happened? The sacrifice has to be brought to the priest. So that's why Messiah was brought to the Sanhedrin because they are the priests. They were the priests to offer up the sacrifice. That's why. Even though they didn't know what they were doing, they were sinful, but God knew. And then before he was offered up, according to the smicha, the, the palms of the priest's hands have to touch the head of the sacrifice. What happened after they pronounce it? They, it says they all started striking his face. And the Greek says with a palm, the Greek is palms, palms of their hand wow. touch the head. And it's the smicha. And according to the mystery, they had to confess the sins of the people or their sins onto the sacrifice. Well, what happened? What happened? The high priest said he is guilty of blasphemy. That wasn't his sin. That was their Theirs. sin. They were the blasphemers. They are they are judging God. They represent they are the priests representing Israel, representing the world. We're all the blasphemers. This is man is God. So they were pronouncing it over him. And so this smicha, only after that could they offer him up. And what was the other thing we know? One of the mysteries in the Book of Mysteries is that that when on Yom Kippur, the, in order for the sacrifice, the priest, high priest, had to perform this. You had a goat and another goat, two goats. Right. And in front of the multitude, they had to decide which goat dies for sin, which goat escapes, scapegoat. So what happened? On the death of Messiah, offering up, there weren't two goats, there were two men. Two men. And one is Messiah and one is Barabbas. Instead of the two goats, you're two men. They have to decide which will be the, which will escape, which will die. So Messiah is chosen to die and Barabbas escapes. Well, we're Bar- Barabbas is us. We're Barabbas, right. the criminal, the murderer. Barabbas, everything's Barabbas. But, but another mystery: the two goats, according to the r- ancient writings of the rabbis, had to look identical. Now, could that mean that that Messiah looked like Barabbas? We don't know that. But, but this, w- but Messiah was the son of the father. Barabbas is a criminal. But there's a mystery here. Barabbas is Greek. In Hebrew, it's Bar Abba. It means the son of the father. Yeah. So here you have the <laughs> son see. of the father and you have the son of the father. So Barabbas, Bar- so we are Barabbas, but he dies. So, so Messiah dies the death of Barabbas, the criminal, that we could live the life of the son of the father, Barabbas, the, the child of God. And then it, it's all there. So sons of Adam become sons of Jehovah. Sons of, yeah, we became, Bar- but you think, oh, Barabbas is bad. It's Barabbas. Mm-hmm. It's the son of the father. You know, amazing. <laughs> That's just the sacrament. That's now, great. Now That's great. I yeah. need to stop yeah. us here and, and, and tell people about Let's how they it. can get some of this. <laughs> all right. If you are watching us, our guest is Jonathan Kahn. We've offered his books before and we still will offer those to you, uh, not only independently and separately, but in a bundle. But uh, his newest book is the Book of Mysteries. And uh, this is available by going online to prophecyinthenews.com. We'll go to our online bookstore. Very easy to order or call the 800 number on your screen. That book is 1995. Um, we offer the Harbinger, the Mystery of the Shemitah. Those are each 1695. But if you want to get all three and get them together, we're actually going to include three free DVDs uh, of Jonathan speaking at mm. our own Prophecy in the News summits that we've had over the last several years. Mm. Three special uh, DVD presentations. I think one of them has maybe two presentations on it. Mm. But uh, you can get the whole package, all three books, Three free DVDs, that's easy to say, mm. for forty-seven ninety-five. Mm. If you have a little bit you want to kick up for that, it'd be a great package. You've heard Jonathan mention people are being saved reading the Book of Mysteries, which we're going to jump right back into. But you may want to order some copies of that to give out as mm. just some witnessing uh, mm. material. It'd be a great blessing. This stuff is hard to put down, I find, uh, the way you weave it into a story. Thank you. So One of the greatest blessings we were talking before, but I was actually doing a book signing, and the person who was helping me in it, says i have to tell you i've been witnessing for years with my friend i gave them the book they got saved so that that's <laughs> what i'm really most happy about everything amen. you know amen. So, yeah for people are giving it to others so well yeah entertain us with some more <laughs> mysteries <laughs> entertain, but all right there's one called the <laughs> not just entertain <laughs> inspire <laughs> there's one called the haftorah mystery now this is really cool and this involves history and ultimately prophecy there is uh, and you i'm sure you know it, kevin but a lot of people don't know it and that is that there is there is Every week on the Sabbath in the synagogue, they read a portion of Scripture. Mm-hmm. And one is called, one is the Torah portion from the law. The other is called the Haftorah portion. And that is from the prophets. So every week in, across the world, from ancient times to now, there is an appointed Scripture prophecy for Reading. appointed for that Sabbath. Okay, now, the question here is this. 
we know God said Israel would come back into the world. End times. Come back. 1948. May 14th, May 15th. May 14th, Ben Gurion announces, gives the proclamation. Right. And then May 15th, it begins. A war begins, too, at the same time. Yeah, exactly. So Israel, so prophecy comes. Well, my question, I, I'm wondering, could God have actually timed the, I mean, we know God is perfect. Could he have timed this? Could there be a link? And when I looked, and let me tell you what, what this is. What was, what could there be anything? What was all across the world, Israel came into existence, May 14th was Friday, Friday. And they, they announced it just before the Sabbath came. Friday right, night, right. Sabbath comes. But then May 15th is Saturday, Sabbath. So the whole thing happened, Israel came back into existence on the Sabbath. So that means there was an appointed scripture. So from ancient times. So could there be something here, Ken, Kevin? Could there be something? And the, the answer is amazing. What was the scripture appointed from ancient times for May 14th and 15th, 1948? This is where you say, buy the book and find out. <laughs> no, go ahead, go ahead. I'm not going to do that to okay. you. Okay. <laughs> uh, but there's but more, whatever I tell you, it's just a taste because there's so much more. But here's the thing. Here, the scripture was from Amos. It was, at that time, I will restore uh -huh. the captivity of my people. I will, I will bring them back to the land. They will rebuild their houses. They will do that. And no one shall uproot them from their land. Amos 9. Yeah. Amazing. Tabernacle was of David. Taberna that's it. That's part of it. And I that's will quoted in Acts 15. That's even right. reaching the Gentiles. That's reaching it. And, All and the it's peoples. Israel. And oh uh, that was appointed for yeah, May 15, 1948. I'm getting my, my skin standing up. My <laughs> hair true. on my skin is standing up. It's amazing. Up. And if you look at that script, I mean, it's amazing what's in there. That's incredible. It, yeah. I mean, God is so. And so what it means is that, that he, he, for 2,000 years, planned that exact scripture for that exact week, that exact day. I mean, God, which is saying that how, how, it's awesome, amazing. God, how awesome God is in all of our lives. Of course. Know? Yeah. So that's a little thing there. Now, another thing, now a whole different stream of mysteries. There's also, there's also streams of mysteries, meaning... There, you'll read a mystery, and then throughout the book, it's going to keep on. Is that mystery, you're going to have another mystery another, that's going to link to that. To the end, it's all going to come together as a bigger mystery. Well, one of the mysteries are the hidden writings of the rabbis. Right. Now, now a lot of people don't know about this. The rabbis have amazing things. And now, it's not scripture, but it's a testimony without them even meaning to testify to Jesus, to the Lord. And that is, one of them is called the scepter of Judah. And I will just say this. There is, in the hidden writings of the rabbis, there, from ancient times, they, they give an actual time when Messiah had to come by. The Messiah has to come by this time or by this, this. When this event happens, Messiah has to come. The scepter of Judah. And what they do is they get it from when, when the, there's a, in, the, in Genesis, a blessing is given to Judah. It says, the scepter shall not depart from right. Judah. Genesis. Until the Lord, yeah. And so, so the rabbis took that. And the until rabbis Shiloh said, comes. Till Shiloh comes. And they took that as Messiah. They took Shiloh right, as Messiah. Right. In, in Hebrew, Shiloh could be to him who it belongs to, but Shiloh. So they took it as Messiah. So they said, so they said when, whenever Israel loses, if we lose the power, the scepter of over life and death, Messiah has to come by that day. Now, it's recorded in the book of the rabbis. It's recorded in, the, in their writings that the Sanhedrin, which was ruling Israel, they lost the power. The Romans stripped them of the power of life and death. And they, they said, when did this happen? They put it, they said about 40 years before the temple was destroyed. Around the year 30 AD, Messiah had to come, the scepter of Judah. They dated it. Wow. So what happens around that time? Yeshua, Jesus happens just when the rabbi said, whoever the Messiah is, he's got to come by this day, scepter of Judah. And that's when he comes. They dated it to the Messiah. This is the time. Of, this is the rabbi. And at that point, it's an inconvenient truth for them. <laughs> so they have to back off. And can I just tell any of yeah, our skeptical yes. friends uh, about, uh, you know, I've sometimes had pushback from people on, well, you're reading things in and all on these kind of issues. Can I just point out that there's biblical precedent that Caiaphas, the high priest, prophesied that Jesus would die for the sins of the nation in the Gospel of John. Absolutely. And he being high priest prophesied that year, not even knowing it. Absol absolutely. It is expedient absolutely. that one man die and not all the people. Absolutely. In fact, and he was plotting yes. the death of Christ. Yes. And he was, and this, this goes, but God was speaking to him. And yeah, exactly. This, you know, but I, I mentioned that in the Harbinger because, because what happens there is you'll see leader. It's just because of his office. You know, there, there, you there are leaders in America who were saying these prophetic things, Isaiah nine, without knowing what they, they didn't know what they were doing, yes. but it was prophetic. Exactly. They're, you know, nobody's reading into that. It's there. And <laughs> even the fact that the priests, we, you know, we, this goes with what we said earlier, the priests offered him up. They were, they were sinning. They were, there was murder, but God works it all out. It was sacrifice. God wow. is perfect. Absolutely. Wow. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And well, we, yeah. wow. 
Well, we have time for maybe one more. Okay, I'll I'll put one. Yeah. Also, and remember, it's it's not just to get uh, you know not just to get blown away. It's to change your life. It's That's for right. victory. Amen. So let me. So so there are several mysteries that talk about how to find the <laughs> destiny of your. How do you find God's will for your life, destiny of your life, and how do you know it? How do you, well, the teacher takes the disciple to this big mountain and says, on the top of the mountain, you have this one exact spot at the very top where something's waiting for you, and you've got to find it. So, well, how do I know? Well, there's all these paths that lead up the mountain. The, the teacher, the student says, how do I know which? But he says, you're going to have to find that out. So he goes up, goes up, and keeps on messing up, keeps on going on another trail, ends up down the mountain, me- couldn't find it. And, he said, and the teacher says, well, here's the, secret, here's the thing. In Hebrew, there's a word called aliyah. And aliyah is this. Whenever you read about Jesus going to Jerusalem, Notice, it almost always says he went up to Jerusalem. Why? Jerusalem's on the mountains. So whenever you go to Jerusalem, you're making Aliyah. Aliyah is the upward ascent, songs of ascent. Aliyah. Right, right. It's all that. So whenever you go, when Jewish people came back to Israel prophetically, it was called the Aliyah. So the thing is that, so here's the thing. We, all of us, we are spiritual Israelites. Doesn't matter if you're born a Jewish, you are a spiritual Jew. And so you're li- you are heading to Jerusalem. You're heading to New Jerusalem. Amen. And so your whole life is an Aliyah. So in order, how do you know God's will for your life? Man, well, do I go here? Do I go here? One simple thing. The teacher said, all you had to do was this. Every day, you had, all you had to do was take the upward step. Every day in your life, you're going to be given choices to go up or down, to resist sin or, or mm. go with sin, That's to go good. with the flesh, go with the spirit. All you have to do every day is take the higher step. And what's going to happen is you're on the mountain. It doesn't matter where on the mountain you are. You're going to keep going to that exact center point of God's destiny in your life. You're going to intersect whatever path it's going to be. You don't have to know. Maybe I don't know that path. You're going to intersect it. If you keep going up every day, I'm going to take the higher step. You're going to be led into the appointed destiny. Follow the will of God that you know in the Bible. It's going to lead you to the will of God you don't know. And you're going to be end up on the mountaintop at the exact point of your life. that God. Oh, has that's good. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Well, in just about the minute I have left, that's what I want to take in, in from Jonathan's heart and the word of the Lord to say to you take that next step today take up go go for the high road go for whatever god puts in front of you that is of the way of the spirit maybe you're watching today and you're facing a big decision or maybe you've got uh, something in your family that's torn you up or always we're faced with a choice will we forgive or not when we're wounded Mm. and the step up is to forgive but maybe you're watching and you've never yet given your life to christ Mm. the great step today is what jonathan spoke about 10 minutes ago or so about putting your hand Mm. on the Messiah, Mm. transferring your sin and guilt to him, and he will transfer his righteousness and holiness to you. But it has to happen when you pray by faith and turn to him who died for you. Call on his name and be saved today. And until he comes, we're going to keep looking up. Thank you.